So in Black Ops Cold War you need to shoot and kill 50 enemies taking cover from you in multiplayer to unlock the science camo in order to get gold, diamond and dark matter camos in the game. So in this video I'm going to give you guys the best guide for killing enemies behind cover really fast in terms of giving you the best maps and game modes, the best class setup for this and the best tips and strategies in game for completing this challenge. I know it can be a difficult challenge but with these tips it should be a lot easier obviously so just make sure you're sticking around until the end of the video to get the most out of this guide and don't miss out on any important tips. If you want to check out any other camo challenges or gold gun guides I've got a playlist with all those videos and there'll be links for those in the description and a card on screen for those videos and that camo guide playlist. So if you're interested in any other guides, definitely go and check that out. I've covered lots of challenges as well like headshots, long shots and bloodthirsties. I'll also have timestamps in the description for the different parts of this video, but like I say, you're probably going to get the most out of it if you watch the whole thing. Without further ado, let's jump into this guide and talk about how to easily kill enemies taking cover from you in multiplayer. Let's first talk about the challenge and the best tips for doing it and then we'll go on to talk about the class setup and the best maps for this. At the end of the video I'll have the best spots on each map for getting this done so it's definitely worth checking that out. So what do you have to do for this challenge? Well first of all you need to be killing enemies that have part of their body covered however it seems that it has to be a complete part of their body so for example both their legs and part of their torso covered so that it's exposing the rest of their chest and their head rather than them being only partially covered so for example if one of their legs was sticking out or their arm and the piece of cover was only covering a quarter of their body like their leg that wouldn't count they have to be standing completely behind cover or crouching behind it or whatever so you can just see part of them but a complete part of their body is covered that seems to be one of the key points to getting this challenge done so it won't just count if someone's half standing behind a box basically it also seems that proximity is key too so the enemy needs to be standing close to the object of cover for example if it's a low wall or barrels or a box or a window they need to be kind of close to it they can't be standing really far back from it or it doesn't seem to count the enemy also needs to be looking at you or roughly in your direction they can't be turned around facing away from you otherwise it won't count as well and i'd also recommend that you can try and manipulate enemies behavior to get them close to cover so for example the b domination point on armada there's a side corridor in the middle building in the middle of the ship it has um, tables on either side of that corridor and enemies will often go up to them as cover to look over across to the other side of the corridor because that corridor has the B flag on it. Enemies will come up to that and so you can look across to the other side and see if any enemies are hanging behind that table and looking across to the other side. Alternatively you can hang behind the table but slightly further back push yourself back just a little bit and when the enemies walk through this room they'll sometimes get close to the table or look at you if they see you're on the other side of it and obviously if they get close to it it will count towards the challenge so push yourself back a little bit and then when the enemy runs past they'll be behind that table sometimes they'll look at you see you're there come towards you or move towards your direction and the fact that they're looking at you and they're close to the table means it will count towards the challenge or it should do anyway also be aware of enemies coming around the corner so for example if they're standing behind or walking by some barrels if you shoot them while they're standing behind it it should count as long as the whole part of their body is covered and so be on the lookout for this there are several times where i'd run past someone who was standing behind something and then i tried to kind of walk around it because i just panicked and they then ended up walking away from the barrels which made the challenge not count and so if i'd pushed myself back behind the barrels they would have been there as well and i could have used that as one of the points towards the challenge so definitely be on the lookout for this and if you're really struggling with the challenge stay near areas that are good for getting these kills when enemies are behind cover so like i say domination points and other places like that and i also have the best spots on the good maps for this challenge at the end of the video so if you want to know the best spots on most of the maps stay around to the end or skip ahead to that so you can find the best spots on each map for this we'll quickly go on to the class setup and then like i say go on to the modes and the maps and best spots so first of all i'd recommend putting on the gunfighter wild card and then this gives you an extra three attachments and then for the attachments i put on the microflex led the suppressor the 13.7 inch takedown barrel, the SOF target designator, the field agent grip, the SAS mag clamp, the airborne elastic wrap, and finally the radar pad. The perks aren't essential, but the ones I'd put on are paranoia in perk one, so you hear a noise if someone's aiming at you, and your vision pulses if they're looking outside of your field of view. In perk two, I'd put on quartermaster, which allows you to recharge your equipment faster, and in perk three, I'd put on cold blooded. For the equipment, I'd put on a stim shot for the tactical, so you can heal yourself. You often take a lot of damage in hardcore, so you can heal yourself and survive longer with this piece of a tactical equipment. And like I say, the quartermaster perk allows you to keep recharging it. For the lethal, I'd ignore it altogether because it doesn't help with the challenge. And then for the field upgrade, I'd put on a field mic. If you put that down somewhere near one of the spots that I recommend later on in the video, then obviously if you see anyone coming towards that spot, you can use it. So this can be great for finding enemies near these spots to get these kills done as fast as possible. For the score streaks, you want to be keeping them non-lethal. So that's spy plane, counter spy plane, and armor. We'll then move on to the game modes now. So 
Hardcore is probably important because these enemies are often going to be quite a distance away and they're going to be in a window so it's harder to shoot them and kill them. So in Hardcore they have less health and it's easier to kill them. The best modes would probably be Free For All, Domination and TDM in Hardcore. And in terms of the maps, the best maps would be ones like Armada, Cartel, Miami, Garrison and now that Nuketown's out, probably Nuketown as well. So now let's quickly talk about the best spots on each of the good maps and this will be probably the fastest way if you're really struggling you can just sort of camp and hold down this area and look at these points and wait for someone to come to that spot if you're really struggling so first of all we've got armada there's enemies on either side of the balcony behind the wall that can be a great spot you've also got enemies coming into the middle room from that balcony via the windows so if they're facing you and you're inside that room they'll be behind the low wall or window and so it'll count as cover and you can do it that way that's probably a good way that not many people think of also you have enemies in the windows in the back middle and front of the ship there's loads of windows so definitely be on the lookout for that and also those tables that i mentioned earlier in the side corridor of the middle building they can be great as well and then any other barrels or boxes or low walls or solid pieces of cover on this map for cartel you want to stay in the middle area of it by the sniper tower or in the sniper tower what you want to do is basically look across to the windows of both huts facing the tower. I'll show you how to do that. You can often flip between looking at both of them. It can be a great way to do it on this map. Obviously, this isn't the best map for it, but if you are on this map, this is definitely the best spot for it. And also in this area, you've got barrels, hay bales and low walls, all of which enemies sometimes stand behind as cover. So you can use them as well. Obviously, these can be great ways to get this done on this map. So it's definitely not the worst map by any means. You can also kill anyone facing you taking cover in the sniper tower too, so don't forget that. And now moving on to Miami, you first of all got the window of the visitor center. I'll show you where that is, that can be a great one. There's also the balcony of the Blackwood building at the front of it, and also in the walkway balcony at the back of the hotel by the pool. So that can be great as well for people looking at you. But bear in mind they have to be facing directly at you, not walking sideways across the balcony. You've also got the front balcony on the Paramour building, and this is a really great one, especially in modes like Free For All. Tons of people come here all the time, so you can always hop on top of the bus and wait for people to come onto this balcony. Try and let them come as close to the balcony wall as you can, because obviously that increases the chance of getting this kill. And occasionally you'll also see people as well on the railing of the stairs at the back of the Paramour building by the car park. You'll see what I mean, I got a kill from here and it counted, so this can be great as well, but it's not as common. You're probably more likely to see it in free-for-all. Obviously, don't forget if you see any other pieces of solid cover that enemies are hiding behind, definitely take advantage of these as well. Moving on to Garrison, you've got the box in the long side corridor. A lot of people come to this from the other spawn on the opposite side of the map, so that can be really great, and you'll often see a shadow as well when people run into that room to get to the box, so you'll know they're coming ahead of time. But ideally, you want to make sure that they're behind the whole box, not half standing behind it. You've then also got the control room in the center of the map. People can look through the windows or behind any other pieces of cover, so that can be useful. And if people are standing on the bridge walkway in the factory, that can be a great place as well. People looking out to either side, because if they're looking at you, it will count as one of the kills. You've also got, then got some ledges on either side of the spawn on a raised platform, so bear in mind this can be good as well if people are looking at you. And then finally, like I say, any other pieces of cover or boxes or barrels on the map. Finally, we've got Nuketown, which has just come out. And the best spots for this map are probably window to window, i.e. from the window of one house across to the window of the other house, especially if they're close to the window. That can be really good and you'll probably get a lot from those. You've also got the centre truck. There'll be a spot in there which enemies can hide behind and look across at the house, so that can be great for getting kills that way as well. There are also desks in each building so and you often get campers behind there, so that could be good as well. And then finally, any other pieces of cover on the map that you can see or think of. If there's any other ones I can find, I'll put them in this gameplay as well. But that's been the best way to get these kills on enemies hiding behind cover. It's one of the most difficult challenges, so if you can't get it done right away, I'd recommend doing all of the other camo challenges, including the rapid kills, and then coming back to this at the very end if you're still struggling. But if you use this method, it should be hopefully a lot easier, and if the worst comes to worst, you can just camp around one of those good spots and wait for enemies to come along. As I mentioned, I've got tons of other camo guides and a camo playlist, so if you're interested in any other camo guides, make sure you go and check that out. And if you found it useful, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe with your post notifications turned on to stay up to date with all my latest Black Ops Cold War and Warzone videos. Like I say, I've got tons more challenges and camo guides coming on the way, so you don't want to miss out on that. But thank you for watching, hope you found it useful, and I'll see you all on the next video.